today on Net Positive, the, pro the uh, project is a pontoon boat. Uh, we've done the 53 mile an hour speed boat, and now we're going to try and do a pontoon boat, which might be uh, something we could then scale up to a houseboat on Lake Powell, the goal being 100% solar self-powered. So we've got the uh, 18 foot uh, sun, sun tracker party barge 2021 model, and uh, I've removed the uh, power head from it. So we'll just sell that. That's brand new and unused. I'm uh, really quite amazed at how well the uh, batteries fit inside the pod. Um, my idea would be to actually put a third pontoon on a higher performance version of this, which would be uh, big enough to hold like easily six of these batteries, so 120 kilowatt hours, um, making a full solar bimini or canopy top for it. Boat could just sit out there and charge and with 120 kilowatt hours, obviously depending on your speed, you could probably have 150, 200 mile range um, and then sit out for a couple days and let that recharge. So the hardest part of, uh, of this whole project um, is actually just sort of the voltage integration of everything. Uh, the Tesla battery modules are one of three different variants, one of two variants within the same pack from, from any given vehicle. The outer batteries are a 23 series and the inner are 25 series. And so these run about eight volts higher. And of course that affects your cutoff voltages, your charge voltages and everything. Um, and then the battery management system. So this is very, very important for any kind of heavy load vehicle uh, where we're gonna be really demanding a lot out of these batteries. Uh, the water connection's nice, They're, we can liquid cool them. And so we can control temperature that way, but we need to be able to control the voltage of each of those 23 or 25 strings of, of cells. So there's a, some batteries in parallel, and those batteries in parallel are then put in series. And so each of these contacts represents one of the 25 strings in the series configuration of the batteries. So I will be soldering a wire onto each of these traces and running it to the battery management system which will basically keep all batteries at the same voltage because if one gets a little higher over time when you're charging especially you can end up with a fire in that battery which of course would be catastrophic uh, over here i got a dc to dc converter that'll take the 96 volts down to 12 volts for the 12 volt systems on the boat such as lighting but also will run the battery management system and then here i've got a 96 volt charger that will integrate with the battery management system so if a, a cell gets out of voltage range and the battery management system can't shunt enough voltage from it it will shut off the charger i'm able to reuse some of the original tesla connectors for the the cooling loop and um I'm using two watt welding wire for the main power leads and uh, an anderson disconnect like this um, not using the heavier 4 watt for this system because I think our, our maximum continuous current is about 340 amps. And this will be adequate for that. So I removed the four battery modules from a Tesla Model 3 that was wrecked as they have by far the best power to weight ratio. And so here's the boat uh, out on its new home, uh, Lake Las Vegas, uh, an electric only lake. And got the uh, gas motor sold. Uh, and the trailer sold since the boat will permanently be here on Lake Las Vegas and had really good performance on it so far uh, here on the dock we've got a couple other toys I'll be doing videos on soon an electric uh, jet powered jet drive powered uh, kayak and the uh, flight board e-foil those are a ton of fun out here had to brand the uh, put the electric stickers on there so people would know it's not gas powered because it does look like a gas outboard as it's basically built upon a uh, Yamaha. Ended up having to move the main battery into a waterproof box here. Uh, even though I had welded uh, the back of the gas tank pod and motor mount pod closed, uh, it, it filled up with water, with water coming over the top from the high speeds we were able to obtain. And so, uh, really would have been like to put the batteries in the pod but this back deck box works pretty good we just have the 120 kilowatt hour uh, battery on this boat 
So under the cowling here, uh, you can see the same setup as I did on the electric uh, outboard for the uh, ski boat. This is a Sevcon controller, uh, liquid cooled, three phase synchronous AC motor, uh, same heavy duty forklift battery type disconnects. And I went with a four blade prop on this just because it's pushing a, a heavier boat. And uh, about a 60 horsepower equivalent on this. We were able to go the higher current due to the uh, ability of the battery to deliver that kind of power. And then went with the uh, Lavorsi top mount, which didn't fit quite right over the previous hole, but I could, I suppose, make an adapter plate for that. So not the most efficient uh, way to propel this boat as the lower unit is a bit too small for this type of load. Um, this, this is really like the lower unit from like a 30, 40 horse. Uh, this is the largest diameter propeller I could get on here and for the most blade area possible. So it works just fine, but uh, probably not as efficient as a larger prop would also be. Also went with just onboard charging in this case. We had the room and weight wasn't a concern. So 3,500 watt charger uh, or 1,200 watts if you're only running off a of 120, but you can, uh, it's ag power agnostic and plug it into any uh, 120 or 240 outlet and get respective charging speeds. So I'm gonna do a little just natural video here without, uh, I'm not gonna put any sound effects over the, the sounds of things. I've always wondered why with the electric uh, videos, people always have music over the background and I've been guilty of that too. And I think it's just, it's so quiet. We feel like we need to add some excitement or something, but <laughs> the excitement of course is just uh, the fun and the nature and, and being out in it. So we'll open this thing up here in a minute and see what she does. So at idle speed here, you can see the uh, tiny little bit of water coming out. It is liquid cooled controller and motor. So that's nice not to worry about the overheating there. So here we are at wakeboard speed. Uh, actually probably make a fairly decent wakeboard boat just with the power that it has on it there. Wake is coming in fairly close to the back of the boat. Speed of about 17 miles an hour. Riding up front, probably just hearing uh, mostly the wind noise. And that's about what it's like riding on an electric pontoon. We go into a hard turn. And coming right back at our own wake, pretty maneuverable. This boat has about a 150 mile range at idle speed like this with just one battery. Uh, if I were building a, a boat that was designed for high performance long term, I would add more than just the one battery. There would be room probably for four. And uh, without even getting into the pontoons, which I think will be a down the road project. Solar canopy is next. So for all the joys of uh, boating electric is usually on a pontoon like this, just gonna mean some slow trolling motor. Uh, to be able to actually go wakeboard with this is quite a treat. Dock here, we've got the shop mascots there waiting for us. I'd like to be notified of my up and coming videos on the Tesla Model S Plaid version, the electric jet powered kayak, and the flightboard electric e-foil. Please go ahead and subscribe to this channel. There'll be some fresh content coming out shortly. Hope you enjoyed today's presentation and also be sure and check out my uh, album on iTunes and Pandora, uh, Electric Jellyfish by Johnny Lee Tempest.